Well, my dear students, now we are again back to the forging lectures. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to speak on the same topic that we continued in the last lecture, that is hammers and presses for different kind of forgings. We would also discuss the dyes and dye materials uh, that is very much used for hot forging especially. We would also cover some of the aspects of tool design and uh, the friction and lubrication issues in forging also we would look into. So, if you recall the previous lecture where we started with the different kinds of hammers and presses for forging. So, the last lecture uh, the power hammer and all those things. Now, this slide if you look at this shows a multiple ram presses. Last time we discussed the hydraulic presses and we could show that the, the, the size of size and the power that the hydraulic uh, machines can apply is very large as compared to the power hammers and all that. So, the multiple ram presses where you have the hollow flashless forging that are suitable for use in the manufacture of wall, wall bodies. right? So, hydraulic cylinders like uh, the seamless tubes and a variety of pressure vessels can be produced in a hydraulic press with multiple rams, right. Uh, the hollow flashless forgings are uh, that are suitable for use in the manufacture of wall bodies, you know, the hydraulic cylinders, seamless tubes and a variety of pressure vessels can be produced in uh, the hydraulic presses with multiple rams. So, look at these figures some of the, the examples of multiple ram forgings, where the displacement of metal can take place from vertical, horizontal or combined as well. It can be vertical and horizontal planes and uh, some of the dimensions are given here in inches that it can handle. Now, you look at this where see the, the first case is the vertical one, second case is another where the two plugs are you are using, the other case also. So, in all these example you will see there are multiple rams moving to apply load on that. So, you look at the first case where there are two dies horizontally moving. So, that is also under the pressure ram and there is a vertical uh, ram also that is uh, to provide a punch kind of uh, impression in the forging. So, you can see. So, this is what is the purpose of multiple ram presses. In fact, the forging engineer must have sound knowledge of the different forging machines in order to that use of use the existing machine more efficiently because a particular machine may have a given maximum power and you must use the maximum power at a time. If you are uh, using uh, uh, you are leaving unused these power, so it is loss. So, 
the manufacturing engineers, especially forging engineers, must know the use of these machines. So, uh, to have the sound knowledge of different forging machines, number one that the 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 use of existing machine, if they know the whole knowledge, they would be able to do it efficiently. Secondly, define the existing plant capacity accurately. Thirdly, communicate better with and at times uh, request uh, improved performance uh, from the machine builder and another the, the engineers must develop if necessary in house uh, proprietary machines and uh, possesses not available uh, in the machine tool market one can. And then last one the utilize them in a most cost effective manner. So, this knowledge must be there. As far as the process requirements and forging machines are concerned, look at this figure where this illustrates the, the interaction between the, uh, the principal uh, a kind of relationship flow chart in the form of relationship has been shown here. So, that is uh, this gives uh, illustrations uh, of the interaction between the principal machines and the process variables for hot forging uh, conducted in presses. Uh, if you look at the figure left, uh, the flow stress where the sigma uh, interface friction condition and uh, part geometry, especially the dimensions and shape, determine the load that is at each position of the stroke and the energy required by the uh, forming process. The flow stress in fact increases with increasing deformation rate and with decreasing work metal temperature. The magnitude of these variations that is uh, changes depends on the specific work material. Uh, that is the type of alloy and its volume. The frictional condition uh, deteriorate with increasing the die chilling that is the cooling effect it comes. So, look at this one the, the mention the relationship between the process and uh, machine variables in hot processes. You, you can look here the process variables are at the left and the, the equipment variables are, are on the left. So, process variables uh, involves the flow uh, stress of the forging material, the friction, lubrication, forging geometry, the forging tolerances right and uh, then uh, the like the flow stress requires the strain rate, die temperature, the work metal temperature all those things and uh, this is strain rate which comes directly from the equipment that is the slide velocity and uh, the work material temperature also it depends on the, um, the contact time right. The stiffness of the machine tool uh, it goes to the to decide the forging tolerances and uh, cleanness and flatness and uh, parallelism etcetera is also uh, an input to the forging tolerances to decide uh, the machine load, uh, the machine energy uh, and all those things require along with the, uh, the strokes per, per minute at uh, from the, the equipment. The strokes per minute under load etcetera all these things uh, are part of the equipment and they, it goes and that is how depending on the process parameters, the equipment one can uh, find out the required load which is required in the form of energy for carrying out the particular hot forging. So, this gives an idea and the relationship between the two process and machine variables. Now, look at this figure where the load versus displacement curve for various uh, forming operations and uh, the energy developed in the process uh, one can calculate as the load multiplied by displacement and multiplied by m, where m is the factor 
characteristics of the specific forming operations. The, the three cases rather the six cases are shown here. If you look at the A, A is the closed die forging with flash. So, you look at the M which is the factor of characteristics of the forming that is you, in case of closed die forging use the slight displacement and the load versus. So, its nature is slightly different. So, uh, and in case of B the upset forging uh, without flash has been shown the nature is quite different you see. In case of C if you look this is the forward and backward extrusion case the nature is the slight displacement is uh, quite different and that is how the load versus displacement curve is quite different in all these six cases. Now, you look at, uh, at the bending case where the slight displacement is quite different. Uh, and if you look at the E, the blanking, so initially it and then it drops, so that is another value and then the F is corresponding to the coining. So, the coining, so this what it shows the load and the corresponding displacement is very different depending on the process, whether it is a uh, uh, closed die forging uh, with flash, whether it is a upset forging without flash, forward or backward extrusion case, bending, blanking, all those things. So, this gives an idea the, the role of displacement and then this displacement is also associated with the equipment a stroke one can correlate. As far as the classification so far whatever we have discussed one can classify and characterize the forging machines like uh, it can be classified into three major types. Whatever we have discussed, I am just summarizing it here. Three major types, number one, that is the, the force restricted machine. So, force restricted machine that we have seen as the hydraulic presses, right. The second one is stroke restricted machines, that is all kind of mechanical presses. And the third one is the energy restricted machines like the hammers and screw presses. So, if you look at this figure, the figure number 3 here, it gives the load versus time and displacement versus time curve, uh, which is obtained on a 22 mega Newton hydraulic press. The case A, the part A figure, uh, it shows the accumulator drive system. Uh, where the first start of the deformation shows second uh, sorry the A shows the direct drive case. The A where it shows the, the first one is the direct drive and the second one it shows the accumulator drive system where the case one is the initial uh, start of the deformation, second shows the initial dwell period and third is the end of the deformation and fourth dwell before pressure release and fifth is the ram lift. This is what has been uh, one can see here, the, it has been marked on the top and this guides how the uh, uh, accumulator drive system which is a part of the hydraulic press uh, that is your force restricted machines. So, that is uh, gives an idea how uh, the load is going to deliver, is going to be delivered for the presses. As far as uh, the load versus displacement, velocity and torque in a simple slider crank mechanism is concerned, this is shown here. Uh, the figure A here it shows the schematic of the slider crank mechanism as you know, it is the slider moves up and down and through that one can think of a ram uh, the, the stroke providing and the second figure gives the, the displacement that and out of that the solid curve uh, 
uh, versus that that is the displacement versus uh, velocity if you see the the dash dash is one and c is another curve where you have the clutch that is the torque m and the machine load uh, on the y axis so why i am going to show you here because it has a link here because the type of torque required the nature of displacement during the forging is very much important so these figures gives you especially the uh, the simple slider crank mechanism and under that how the displacement and velocity uh, varies with your uh, dis, uh, uh, load and the third one is how the clutch torque uh, with m that is the load is associated this table gives you the distribution of total deflection in three types of mechanical presses that we have discussed so far if you look at the 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 distribution of the total deflection in terms of the slide and uh, pitman arm uh, the frame the drive shaft and bearings and if you sum it up all the total deflection so in case of the open point eccentric type of press the this distribution is there that is 30 33 37 in case of two point eccentric press it is 21 31 33 and in case of wedge type press that is 21 29 and 10 so the purpose of this table shows the table load diagram for the same press right so uh, this shows uh, in percentage of the normal load the amount and the the location of the different uh, of uh, uh, off center load that causes the tilting of the ram so the wedge type press has advantage in fact the particularly in front to back uh, off center loading in this respect it performs like a uh, four point press right so what is the giving this table the purpose is to show that when you apply load onto the work piece the all the members of the mechanical press are any kind of rather press like slides frames uh, and the drive structures they all suffer deflection and this deflection if you add together in terms of percentage so that will cause the the tolerances that are to be and the stroke and accordingly the dimensions will suffer so these are also important issue as far as the dies uh, design and even the selection of proper press uh, capacity the the frame structure shape and size of the presses and all that this is what shows the amount and location of off center load that causes tilting of the ram in a setting uh, in eccentric one point press the a shows the eccentric uh, case the the b shows the eccentric two point and the uh, the c shows the wedge type press like here so that is what has been shown same thing uh, then another issue is important in forging as the different types of dies we come across and the material for that that is the dies and dies material especially for hot forging because I, as, as I said the hot forging process is the one which covers most of the industrial forgings and the bigger size for uh, use for uh, hot forging include in fact uh, hot work tool steels that is H series AISI 
series and uh, some alloy steels such as uh, AISI uh, 4300 and uh, 4100 series and a small number of propriety lower alloy materials. The AISI hot work tool steels can be loosely grouped uh, according to their compositions that have and this table gives you the composition of the tool steel and die materials that is very common for hot forging. If you look at here, uh, this shows the, the different constituents of the alloy like carbon, manganese, uh, silicon, cobalt, chromium, uh, vanadium, tungsten and all that and here shows uh, the different base uh, material and there the designation how it is shown. There are three types of that is the chromium base material, then the second one is your tungsten base material and third one is the low alloy uh, uh, material. So, chromium base one it has uh, say H10, H11. H12, H13, H14 and H19, whereas the tungsten based material uh, are S21, 22, 23, 24, 25 and S26, whereas the low alloy uh, 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 materials um, has got uh, AS, uh, uh, ASM other categories where uh, it has been shown these materials are very common depending on the, the type of material you are going to forge, hard force one can select. This table just gives an idea for selecting that. As I told you the open die is has been very interesting. So, the most of the open die forgings are produced in a pair that is how of uh, flat dies one attached to the hammer or to the press ram and the other to the anvil. So, that is the setup. So, this figure shows here the two such situations. So, how you are going to attach you see to the, the press or hammer and another which is attached to the anvil that has been shown here. Usually flat dies you have the flat surfaces like uh, and these uh, should be parallel to avoid tapering of the work piece. Flat dies may range around from uh, 305 to 510 mm in width, uh, although uh, most are from 405 to 455 mm in width, whereas the swage dies are basically flat dies uh, with a, a semicircular shape cup into their centers as the case B is shown. The radius of the semicircle corresponds to the, the smallest diameter shaft that can be produced uh, swage dies uh, offer in fact uh, this, these swage dies offer the following advantages over the flat dies as compared to the case A. Like in the forging of the round bar it is used the swage dies, the minimum side bulging takes place then the, the longitudinal movement of all the metal takes place and the greater deformation in the center of the bar takes place and also the faster operations is possible. As far as certain disadvantages of flash uh, swage dies uh, are that include the, the forge bars of more than one size in uh, most cases. And uh, it is observed the mark on or cut off parts in the contrast to the flat dies are marked has, has been seen. There is another very interesting dies used for hot forging is your impression die as I mentioned earlier. So, the impression dies are uh, in fact for the closed die, it is also called as closed die uh, that is popular. Uh, to be used on presses uh, and are often des designed to force the part in one blow and uh, some sort of 
ejection mechanism for example knockout pins are used uh, it is incorporated into the dies so dies may contain impressions for several parts as well so like this shows the typical uh, multiple impression dies for closed die forging the a has got only uh, see the th there are three impressions like so the type of impression we call it as the fuller impression we call as the finisher impression we call it as the edger impression so other case also uh, it has a, a bender impression as well as so this is called as the uh, die block so on one die block there are number of impressions so the depending on the uh, on the type of hot forging one can design such kind of uh, die block having number of impressions on same die block and the uh, one by one the forging has to be kept and go on providing the press and uh, get the different impression one by one so there is a design rule we discuss little bit in the very beginning so the if you look into the fullers edgers uh, rollers flatters and all those things especially the fuller is a die impression which is used to reduce the cross section and to lengthen a portion of the forging stock in longitudinal direction the fuller is usually uh, elliptical or oval to obtain optimal metal flow without producing laps folds or cold shut right so the fullers are used in combination with edgers uh, or rollers or as the only impression before use of the blocker or finisher uh, because uh, fullering usually is the first step in the in the forging sequence and uh, generally uses the last uh, minimum that is the uh, it utilizes the least amount of forging energy because it's the first sequence the fuller is almost uh, always placed uh, on the extreme edge of the die uh, which was shown uh, in the a figure a whereas the edger if you look at the edgers are used to redistribute and uh, proportion uh, stock for heavy sections that will be further shaped in blocker or finisher impressions thus the action of the edger uh, is opposite to that of the fuller a connecting rod is an example of a forging in which a stock is first reduced in a fuller to prepare the slender center uh, part of the rod and then worked in an edger to uh, proportion the ends of the bores and the crank shapes right the edger impression may be often uh, at the side of the die block as shown in uh, figure a are confined in case of b uh, in fact an edger is sometimes used in combination with a bender in a single die impression to reduce the number of forging blows necessary to produce a forging all right and uh, then we have uh, rollers rollers are used to round the stock for example for a square billet to a round or bar like shape eh? and uh, often to cause some uh, redistribution of mass in uh, preparation for the next impression the stock usually is Uh, rotated and two or more uh, blows are needed to roll the stock the operation of a roller impression is similar to that of an edger but the metal is partially confined on all sides with shapes in the top and uh, bottom dies uh, resembling a pair of uh, cello blows because of the cost of this the sinking the die impression rolling is more expensive than edging uh, provided both operations can be done in a same number of blows another 
the flatters, the uh, flatteners in fact, flatteners, flatteners are used to widen the work metal, so that uh, it more nearly covers the next impression or with a 90 degree rotation to reduce the wedge uh, width uh, uh, to within the dimensions of the next impression, right. The flatteners uh, station can be either a flat area on the face of the die or an impression in the die to give the exact uh, size which is required. All right. Um, another, as I said, the benders. The benders, uh, a portion of the die, can be used to bend the stock, generally along its longitudinal axis. Okay. So, in two or more planes in fact, so you can bend it. Uh, there are two basic designs of bender impressions, one we call it is the free flow and uh, tapered stock. In bending uh, with a free flow bender, uh, either one end or both ends of the forging are free to move into the bender. All right? A single bend is usually made. This type of bending may cause folds or small wrinkles uh, on the sides of the bend. So, uh, the tapered stock bender usually is employed for making multiple bends. With this technique, the stock is gripped at both ends uh, as the blow is stuck and the work is uh, and the stock is between uh, between uh, is bent because the metal is held at both ends. It is usually stressed during bending. There is a slight reduction in cross sectional area in the bend, and the work metal is less likely to wrinkle or fold than in a free flow bender. All right, and uh, then. And there are there are splitters yeah, in in making four type forgings like we use splitters so in making four type forgings frequently part of the work metal is, is split uh, so that it con it conforms more closely to the subsequent blocker impressions in a splitting operation the stock is forced outward from its longitudinal axis by the action of the splitter. All right. Generous radii uh, should be used to prevent the formation of the cold shirt in fact, labs or folds etcetera. The blockers as I said the blockers uh, is a kind of impression. So, the blocker impression immediately precedes the the finisher impressions and serve to prepare the shape of the metal before it is forced to final shape in the finisher. All right. Usually, the blocker uh, imparts the general final shape to the forging, omitting those details that uh, restrict metal flow in finishing and including those details that will permit a smooth metal flow and complete filling in the, the finisher impression. Finishers, the, the finisher impression in fact, uh, gives the final overall shape to the work piece. Right? So, this impression is the last one and very important. It is in this impression that uh, any excess work material or metal is forced out into the flash form. right? Despite its name, the finisher impression is not necessarily the last step in the production in fact of the forging. A bending or hot coining operation is sometimes used to give the final shape or dimensions to the forged part after it has passed through the finisher impression and the trimming dry. All right. So, this is what is the different 
uh, impressions you get on the for uh, through the blocker forging block uh, and uh, therefore a blocker may be a streamlined model of the finisher used to provide a smooth transition from the from the partial uh, partially finished to finish forging a streamline in fact helps the the metal flow uh, around radii reducing the possibility of cold shut or other defects sometimes the blocker impression is made by duplicating the finisher impression in the die block and then rounding it off as required for a smooth flow of metal when this practice is used the volume of metal in the blocked uh, uh, preform is greater than uh, than uh, will be needed in the finisher impression right so this is what's the a little bit about the different types of impressions and little bit information how what is the applicability of these impressions so uh, as a whole for a forging when you are using a closed die forging this is the usual design process and uh, a good designer uses all these kind of impressions to have a good forging as far as the die materials are concerned for uh, hard forging as i said the hard forging die steels are commonly used for hard forging die subjected to temperature ranges from 300 uh 15 to 650 degree centigrade right these materials in fact contain uh, chromium tungsten if you re recall the previous table and uh, in some cases vanadium and molybdenum are both are there so these alloying elements in fact include deep hardening characteristics and resistance to abrasion and softening because when you are forging Uh, the wear of the die materials at high temperature and the aberration this may happen so a proper die material having hardness proper red hardness must be there so these steels usually are hardened in fact by quenching in air or molten salt bath the chromium based steels contain around 5% chromium so that if you recall the previous figure uh the factors that is um, one has to follow for selecting a proper die materials um, one can summarize it here so the the properties in fact of the materials that determine their selection as the material for hot forgings are few numbers like the first factor is that ability to harden uniformly the material should be such that it must have an ability to harden uniformly secondly the wear resistance that is the ability to resist the abrasive action of hot metal during forging right third is required the resistance to plastic deformation that is an ability to with the stand pressure and resist the deformation under load so the material should be such die material and the fourth is the toughness it should have enough toughness and then the fifth one it must have resistance to thermal fatigue and the heat checking right and the last one that one can list here is the resistance to mechanical fatigue so all these six points are very very important for a good material die material especially for hot forging this plot shows uh, one of the uh, uh, different materials that was shown in table previous so this shows the hard hardness of aisi hot work tool steel uh, measurements was done after holding at the test temperature for around 30 minutes so if you look at the temp, uh, the uh, different die steels 
especially the hard work dye steel H11, 12, 13, 21 and the hard hardness. If you see uh, especially for H11 at 100 degree centigrade the hardness hard hardness is high and as the temperature increases it decreases to around uh, less than 30 at around uh, 600 degrees centigrade. Whereas, if you see the S21, it has a better one. So, uh, this is what is the different application depending on the, the forging temperature. So, one can select. Similarly, this also shows the resistance of AISI hot work tool steel to softening during 10 hour elevated temperature, which is uh, given exposure as measured by room temperature hardness, right? unless otherwise specified by the values in parameters. Initial hardness of the all uh, specimen, which is shown here was taken as 49 as the HRC. So, you can see here the hardness, the exposure temperature, if you give it for uh, 500 say for different uh, dye steels H10, H11 and you can see the H19 has a better one uh, the exposure time. So, that is also in, uh, how long the forging process goes on under a given temperature. That temperature also matters as the temp uh, it goes on more and more the hardness has to retain. So, that is the thing. This table this plot shows the resistance of dye steel to plastic deformation at elevated temperatures. So, here the values are shown in Rockwell C hardness scale and if you see the temperature variation for H11 where the 0.2 percent yield strength. So, initially it is very high as the temperature increases the, the yield strength decreases. So, we look at there, so it drops from around 1200 mega Pascal to around uh, 900. So, if this happens, what will happen to the, the dye material? So, that is how these are important as a designer one has to know what will happen in the subsequent operation and as the time elapses the, to the hardness and the toughness and all those things to the designer. This plot shows the elevated temperature uh, ductilities of the various hot work dye steels. Uh, this is also shown on the Rockwell C hardness. You see the reduction in area as the uh, ductilities shows with temperature. So, if you see the H11, so the reduction in area, high reduction is happens you can see the variation. So, this is what is the at the elevated uh, ductilities of the various hot work steels. So, H11 that is how it is found to be very good S13 as well and uh, whereas, the low ductility cases H19, H20 is there. The effect of this uh, plot shows the effect of hardness, uh, the composition and the testing temperature on Charpy V notch impact strength of hot work dye steel. Uh, again, the uh, hardness is C scale Rockwell. You can see the temperature and the Charpy test say the uh, at lower temperature if you see the H11 if you look at and uh, then the Charpy test the strength impact strength at uh, and as the temperature increases you can see the trend right. So, uh, with temperature, if you look at uh, as the temperature increases, the impact, the in impact strength of these dyes uh, under the V notch impact test has been used. 
as far as uh, I mentioned the different types of defect in the previous uh, lecture, if you look at the common failure when you design dies as we discussed the common failure mechanism for forging dies, there are four different types of common failure. So, you look at these four uh, that is the upper uh, a, a peculiar shape of forging die, hot forging die has been shown here for a different very complex nature of a forging. So, the upper die block and the lower die block has been shown and uh, the four uh, failure mechanism are shown here. So, you can look at here see. So, the number one is your abrasive wear which we call. So, abrasive wear looks like the region that has been marked as a symbol. The second is your thermal fatigue, the region where the thermal fatigues are at almost the flat surfaces are shown. Third one is the mechanical fatigue, where we have a kind of uh, uh, sharp corners. So, that suffers a large uh, failure of the mechanical nature. You can see the sharp regions where the and the fourth one is the plastic deformation. So, that is the case where you have uh, at the corners you can look at the corners are more bound to have the plastic deformation and that to the sharp corners all right. So, uh, uh, these four common failure mechanism like abrasive wear, thermal wear, mechanical fatigue and plastic deformation. A designer must have knowledge idea while designing a die block or dies for this. So, that is the an idea to show it here. So, looking into these uh, let us again summarize the friction and lubrication role of friction and lubrication for the forging especially and that to hot forging as I said in forging the friction greatly influence the metal flow pressure distribution and the load and energy. So, that is all because of the friction. So, the metal flow pressure distribution and load and energy as well requirements. In addition to lubrication effects, the effect of the die filling, die chilling, heat transfer and the hot material to colder dies must be considered. In forging, the ideal lubricant is expected to have few characteristics. So, for a uh, for an ideal lubricant especially for forging must have ability to reduce sliding friction between the dies and the forging in order to reduce pressure requirement to fill the die cavity and to control metal flow. Secondly, it should act as a parting agent and prevent local uh, welding and subsequent damage to the die and workpiece surfaces. Thirdly, it has to possess uh, insulating properties, so as to reduce heat loss from the workpiece and to minimize temperature fluctuations on the die surface. And fourth one to cover the die surface uniformly, so that local lubricant uh, break down and uh, uneven metal flow are prevented. Another important requirement that these uh, lubricant be non abrasive and non corrosive, so as to prevent erosion of the die surface and it should be free of residues and uh, would accumulate that would accumulate in the deep impressions, it should not happen and also uh, it should develop a balanced gas uh, between uh, gas pressure to resist quick release of the uh, forging uh, from the die cavity. This characteristic in fact is uh, particularly important in hammer forging in which ejectors are not used and uh, it should be free of uh, polluting or poisonous component 
that uh, that not uh, produce smoke upon application to the dyes and uh, no single lubricant can fulfill therefore all these requirements listed which i mentioned therefore a compromise must be made for each specific applications in fact uh, various kinds of lubricants are used and uh, they can be applied by swabbing or spraying the simplest is a high flash point oil swabbed into the dye colloidal graphites suspension is also used in either oil or water uh, are frequently used and synthetic lubricants can be uh, employed for light forging operations the water base and synthetic lubricants are uh, extensively used primarily because of uh, uh, it is easy to produce so these are some of the guidelines for as far as the tool design is concerned like uh, when in forging in order to produce sound forging components the forging toolings must be designed to uh, take into certain points into account like when you because not only the the upper die and lower die are concerned but there are many other toolings so uh, so that to produce the sound forging these toolings must be designed uh, first uh, taking into account number one the preform temperature what is the preform temperature that you are going to deal the die temperature that you are going to deal the forging pressure the kind of forging pressure is going to be dealt the elastic strain of the die the elastic and plastic strain of the forging the temperature of the part when it uh, upon ejection the elastic strain of the forging upon ejection and uh, the contraction of the forging during cooling and the tool wear properties so all these things must be kept into mind to produce is uh, to have a good tool design so that you get a sound uh, force components right so these are some of the uh, points that we discussed today i thank you once again for keeping so much patience longer patience today and uh, hopefully uh, most of the industrial aspects has been covered today about the hot forging especially so i thank you once again all of you thank you